is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and what am I reviewing? It's hidden here. I'm reviewing a desktop, even though we're a Mobile Tech Review. But ah, when is a desktop <laughs> actually mobile? This is the Intel Compute Stick. This is the second generation model. This one has a Core M3. It actually says it on here, CPU. Intel Skylake 6th generation Core M3. So it's, it's actually reasonably powerful. When Intel made the first generation one, it was Intel Atom only. Typical of your lowest end netbook, it was pretty underpowered. It had some other drawbacks, not enough USB ports, no cover for the HDMI port for when you actually want to you know, carry it around. Now we have a little fiddly cover here that goes on the end of it. Big as a giant USB stick, but really very portable. So you, this is a desktop computer you can carry around with you. The idea is, is that you stick this into a monitor, a TV, even a projector via the HDMI right here, and then use a wireless keyboard and mouse or a USB wired one if you want, or one of those USB transceiver ones, and boom, you got yourself a desktop PC anywhere, which is pretty neat. You know, I've been reviewing technology for a long, long time, and I have to say, this is still kind of like, wow, <laughs> we've come this far that we have this sort of thing. So, comes in a box like so. There still is an Intel Atom version. It's around $159. It is pretty underpowered. It has two gigs of RAM. The Core M3 is around $350, but you get four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of eMMC flash storage inside. So it's actually kind of usable as a PC at that point. You've got enough RAM, enough storage to multitask and store some programs, that sort of thing. There are ports on it. It has a USB 3.0 port built right over here. And we have a micro SD card slot for cards up to 128 gigs. So you can put your multimedia files, anything else you want to put on there. The other side over here, you see there's a USB-C connector. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's not for USB peripherals. This does not have a battery inside, though it does have a fan. And you can hear it going ee very quietly. But this is for the required power supply. So it is not quite as portable as just throwing it in there because you need this with it. Oh dear, right? So you see how big that is. This is the heaviest USB-C cable I've ever seen, but that's because it transmits both data and power. The stick doesn't require that much power. In the future, maybe they can do it over MHL, power over HDMI. I think it needs about five watts or so. Still a little bit much for, for power over HDMI. But anyway, so this plugs into the compute stick, provides it with power, and also with two additional USB ports. So if you have something legacy you want to plug in, if you do want to use a wired keyboard and mouse, that sort of thing, and the power strip is near you so that the mouse and keyboard reach, you could do that. It's an interesting idea. 350 bucks, you get Windows 10 license with that. If you want to go for Linux or no operating system, you can save yourself about $100 for those of you who are interested in that. Why buy this instead of a desktop? Because you're not going to get a Core M3 with 4 gigs of RAM and even 64 gigs of flash storage for $350. Also for the obvious portability, uh, for companies this makes a lot of sense. You're going to go in to give a presentation, the dreaded PowerPoint moment, right? So you just plug this into the big old monitor that's already in your office or in the conference room. You plug it in and it has access to the file system. It does everything Windows does, full desktop. You can pull your files down. You can put programs on, you can run MS Office, you can run Photoshop on this thing. It's crazy, right? That is kind of neat. So it's versatility for businesses. Potentially for students it could work too. You go into a computer lab, say you want to have all your files and you want privacy, you don't want to use a shared computer. You plug this in at the computer lab, boom, and then you plug in the USB keyboard and mouse that are there and you've got your own personal computer that nobody else has access to your files on. So there are advantages to it. However, for 350 bucks, you could get yourself a netbook that has a built-in display and a battery, so you don't have to always be plugged into electricity like you do with this one. Uh, but that netbook at that price is going to have Intel Atom. It's going to be sluggish and painful. So again, you're getting more power here. It's an interesting idea. It's kind of the future is coming. It's not the only product like it on the market. There are several of these. And if you want to move up a little bit, there's the HP Mini, the Mac Mini. Uh, there are a variety of the little guys that are about, you know, this big. You can carry around. They have more ports and, and some more horsepower in some instances too. So let's take a look at what else it can do now and how it plugs in. So how do you actually use this thing? Well, you can use this with a, a TV at home if you want as an HDMI port, anything with an HDMI port, even a projector. In this case, obviously, we're using a desktop monitor, so you just plug it right into the HDMI port because like a desktop, there's no display built into this itsy-bitsy little thing. You need the monitor so you can see what's going on. Now, just in case you have really tight US uh, HDMI port clearances rather on the back of your TV or your monitor, they give you this little extender cable here so it doesn't have to jut right out of the back of your TV projector or monitor here. So, uh, versatile, certainly.
So how does this work? Well, exactly like a desktop PC. Weird as that seems. You need a keyboard, you need a mouse, you need a monitor. Obviously, you plug it right directly into the monitor because it's so teeny tiny. And you have the USB port both on this, a USB 3.0 type A port, and the two that are on the charger. Again, there's a data connection there. So you can use a USB mouse or keyboard if you want, but it's actually not hard to get going with wireless, whether you use one of those USB receiver kind or Bluetooth, and it's set up well for that. When you first plug it in for the first time, it's going to walk you through setup and it's going to say, if you have a Bluetooth mouse or keyboard or a wireless one with a transceiver, go ahead and connect them now. So it's not like you have to run around and plug in the USB stuff first, get going, and then switch over to Bluetooth. So we did that with this just little ThinkPad travel mouse right here and this Logitech keyboard worked simple. Of course, you could use a wired one if you wanted to, but pff, that wouldn't be much fun, would it? There's even a Android and iOS remote app that Intel makes, so you can turn your smartphone screen into a keyboard software, remote keyboard for it too. And it works kind of okay. I think most people are going to want a real keyboard too. If you want a real P Windows PC, you probably need a real keyboard to go with it, right? So also, just like a desktop PC, they generally don't have speakers. Well, nothing beyond the little speaker that goes beep, you know. So this one, we have YouTube playing right now, but there's no sound because I haven't plugged any speakers into the speaker jack on the monitor. So you get the idea. This is like a desktop PC. If you want that stuff, it's not all in one like a laptop. You're going to have to add it. Now, in terms of performance, this is a 1920 by 1080 monitor we have it plugged into. You could actually plug it into a 4K display. The Core M3, this is sixth generation Skylake, can actually handle driving 4K displays, which is pretty cool. So that part is very nice. And, you know, the Core M3 may not be the fastest. It sits way above the Intel Atom, and this is also available with an Intel Atom CP, which I don't really recommend, other than the fact it's really cheap at like $150. Uh, but it's below like the Core i5 and the Core i7. So think of Surface Pro 4 with the Core M3 option. Similar performance, except for the storage on this is a lot slower. It is eMMC storage, not an SSD. That's a slower kind of flash memory storage. That's going to slow it down a little bit, but it still has the same four gigs of DDR3 RAM as the Surface Pro with the Core M3 inside. So that's an upside right there, and that means that it's got enough for multitasking for everyday light chores, your MS Office kind of work, you're playing your streaming videos, uh, some editing of photographs, all that sort of thing. It's actually fairly capable and usable, and Geekbench multi-core score from Geekbench 4 is just under 5,000, which is about where the Core M3 usually does score. It's not bad in terms of performance. Of course, the drawback is that that little stick in the back there is going to cost you around $350 with Windows 10. They also have a version that has no OS. It's about $100 less because your Windows license costs about $100. So for those of you who want to run Linux or something else, you could actually do that with the compute stick. Of course, it's a Windows PC, so even though it's a little stick that fits in your pocket, it's not immune to Windows updates. And the big ones, I mean like going from Windows 10 to Windows 10 anniversary update, which is, you know, a 4 gig or so update, takes a long time because eMMC flash storage is a lot slower than an SSD. So, uh, of course, you don't have to run those giant updates every day, but just once in a while, it's going to get you. So there it is. The future is here and the future is today and it comes in a classy little plastic box here and 350 bucks. Do I feel like I need one of these? No, I don't. Do you need one of these? That will be interesting to find out. I'd love to hear in the comments if you think that you actually have a use for this. Is it business? Is it for school? What is it? Again, it's a, it's a full Windows 10 PC in here and it has enough power to actually run the programs that most people need to run on a daily basis. Not heavy computing, but you can do some stuff. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos.